I uh, know I didn't. Yeah, I mean I just got a message from one of the teachers uh, who had tutors on on Mixit, mobischool.com forward slash no mixitapp.com forward slash mobischool. Got the bank tintala. You know how we communicate with this? The satellite name of way to gives us a signal. Ella, best we beg and lebeni uzo gutu muntu tede. But I understand you have a question about hearing for our teacher in the studio. Mm. Oh, my question is how do we see and hear from the, from the teacher to the teacher there? Right, how do we see and hear? Now, normally I would have to spend a couple of days teaching you about this. So we're going to summarize things very nicely in the studio here for you. We're gonna start off with how do you see? Now, what we need to understand with any of these of our senses, we need to have an outside stimulus and the stimulus has to be received and then transmitted, that information transmitted to the brain. So in vision or sight, we have what we call photoreceptors and that means that they are stimulated by light. Photo, like in photosynthesis, photograph, a, a diagram or a picture from light, we have photoreceptors and they're part of our eye known as the retina. So in our eye we have a retina which has these very specialized photoreceptor cells which are going to detect the light image and relay or pass on that stimulus to the brain via an optic nerve, a nerve that goes from your eye to the brain with all that information. So I'm sure you've seen this picture in your textbooks and your teacher has provided it for you. Let's look at the structure of the eye and we can see how it is that you are able to see. Well, first of all, we need to know that the eye has basically three layers. You might have seen it in your textbook that they call the tunics. And you, you might think of a tunic as like a, a school uniform. Mm -hmm. And really, a tunic is something that you have as a layer of clothing. In the eye, you've got three tunics or layers. The very outer layer of the eye, and what I've done is I've tried to, to color code it for you, is the cornea here in the front of the eye and you can see it extends all the way around the eye at the back of the eye we call it the sclera that is the fibrous tunic or the very the, the very tough outer layer of your eye and of course it's white in color and that's what you see at the back of your eye you see the white of your eye here where your cornea is that's what you're looking at then we have the layer underneath that, which is the vascular tunic, or the layer that has a lot of vessels in it, blood vessels in it. And that vascular tunic I've indicated here, or color coded for you in black, that forms the choroid. And in the front here, even though it's in, in uh, I've put it in blue, we see this choroid extend into what we call the iris of your eye. And if you look in a mirror, you see that your eye has a certain color, that, that iris. Mine is green, I don't, yours is brown. Girls, you've got brown eyes because it's mm -hmm. genetically predisposed. And so that is the iris, which is part of this middle layer. And then we get to the very delicate inner layer, which I've indicated here in red which is the retina the all-important retina that contains those photo receptors or those cells that are receptive and sensitive to light and as humans we're very lucky we've got two sets of photoreceptors we've got some that receive color and some that are going to help us with shade and in with low light intensities right at the back of our eye we have the highest concentration of these photoreceptors and that area is called the fovea 
and right in the front we've of course got that lens and the lens is able to be pulled thinner or squashed a little bit flatter and that helps us to focus on what we're seeing but the, the job of the lens is to focus everything onto that fovea as close as possible onto the fovea and that's where most of our um, receptor cells are. And then we have the optic nerve that is going to collect all that information from the retina and send it off to the brain. But of course where the optic nerve exits the eye and starts on its uh, voyage, on its journey to the brain, there are no receptors and that is what's called your blind spot because there's, there's nothing there that can detect light. Towards the front of the eye, we've spoken about the lens and the lens is attached to some muscles and some little ligaments that can pull your lens, either flatten it or squash it down a little bit so that I can look at what I'm reading here, which is very close, and I can look out at you and you are much further away and I, it, what I'm looking at here can be in focus and what is way over there can also very quickly be adjusted and so my lens constantly from up close to far away up close to far away my little lens is doing a little dance here it's flattening <laughs> and it's flattening and it's flattening and it's flattening and it's, it's doing quite a little jig here to keep everything in focus so how do we see well in the front of the eye here where the cornea is it's clear and the light will come in through this little pinprick hole in your iris which we call the pupil and the light then is going to move across this liquid that is filling the eye which is called the vitreous humor which means it's glassy liquid, it's transparent, we can see through it and all of that information will be collected and sent via the optic nerve to the brain. Now, wow, that was a speedy summary of vision and the eye, but guys, you need to get this picture, you need to look in your textbook, why don't you color code your picture according to the three layers and you need to know what the function is of each of those labels on your diagram. That's important. If we turn now to how it is that we hear, we are not having photoreceptors in our ear. No one shines light in our <laughs> ear for us to hear. Instead, it's something called a mechanoreceptor, which, what does the word mechano sound like? Mechanical, that's it. So we must expect here that something mechanical is going to happen to pass on the stimulus into the ear and that stimulus will go off to the brain via the auditory nerve. We have the optic nerve in the eye, auditory nerve in the ear. Now, your ear is more complex, I think, than just a hearing organ because the ear also helps us with balance. Something called uh, proprioception is what, what position my head is in and so that I don't lean forward and fall over. The ear is very complex that way. But we're going to focus just on hearing right now. And here, once again, I've tried to color code it for you. Use color and even though you're not allowed to draw in color when you make a diagram in your in your exams when in your study diagrams color coded to help you we've got the outer ear which I've color coded in in red and that is your pinna which you can see which helps to collect the sound waves that are coming in and direct them into your ear and if you were a rabbit you'd have a very big pinna or a cat and you'd be able to direct it in all different directions to catch those sound waves. We've got an auditory canal, the sound waves are going to come in, an auditory canal along which those sound waves are going to pass and then we get to the section known as the middle ear. Now you can stick your finger in to about there. This is going to go all the way through to our middle ear where we've got bones. I spoke to you earlier, Tandeka. Do you remember what the bones are? Ossicles. The ossicles, which are going to pass on this mechanical stimulus right into this section here in the inner ear where we are going to see that we have some little cells lying on a 
basilla or basement membrane as the sound wave hits this basement membrane at a particular pitch the little cell is going to jump up and its hairs on the cell is going to uh, um, hit against the, the, the ceiling membrane and that is going to trigger a stimulus that is sent to the brain. <laughs> Once again, I cannot hope to do all of this. Your teacher should be teaching you this in a whole week. The car was a Uba. Okay, Minaika Malam was to be sent to get him visa and when I'm schooling at my parents' secondary school, I'm doing grade 12. Balam Pegada. Ah, la Pang Pega. Okay. All right, okay. Tell me, I'm going to try to turn the hip hop in Pinjab. Yeah, I like hip hop because young cars are and that's all, yeah. Okay, guna banta ba wazo kaza futi tin studio. So mbuzo wako for bona utin. Okay, my question is why is perception different to reception? Right, why is perception different sometimes to our reception? So we're asking about two words that sound very similar, reception and perception. We need to remember that reception deals with physically what happens in the sense organ. So light comes in and strikes the um, retina. That's a physical reception. But sometimes what happens in the brain is slightly different to the information that comes in from the sense organ because the brain has got to make sense of not just what's coming in but everything else. The brain has got ears information coming in, eyes information coming in, all sorts of things coming in and it's not just a pure signal that's coming in. Sometimes that signal has got other signals with it. So let me give you some examples here. I want you girls to touch your eyes quite, quite, you know, give them quite a little poke and tell me what, what did you experience? Colour. Colour. Mm. Right, so at home you can take your, your fingers and you can poke onto your closed eyes like that and you see something. Mm. But how could you see something? Your eyes were closed. Mm. <laughs> so what is happening here is the eye is being stimulated actually by touch. But to your brain, nothing's supposed to be touching your eye. Any stimulus from the eye is supposed to be light. Oh. So in your brain, although it's a touch and a pressure stimulus, your brain is picking it up as light. So there we've got reception is very different to how the brain is perceiving it. The brain is saying, rubbish, you, you don't touch things with your eyes. <laughs> I'm seeing light. And the brain has decided that what you will, what the brain will interpret that as is light. Mm -hmm. Here's another example. Have a look up at that, uh, up at the screen and, and tell me in that first picture here, what are you seeing? Are you seeing two faces? Mm -hmm. Or are you seeing a vase? Two faces. Oh! <laughs> so, Shalad says she is seeing two faces. Tadeka mm. says she's seeing a, a vase there. Are you seeing in this second picture? A duck. A duck? What do you, a duck. Did you see a duck? Yeah. What do you see? <laughs> I see a duck too. What if I told you I'm seeing a rabbit, right? There's its little jumpy leg and its little tail, and there's its ears. Yes! Okay! Yes. 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 Right. <laughs> Tell me in this picture, which vertical line is the longest one? Ah, the second one. You say this one's the longest one? Mm -hmm. First one. You say that one is. They're identical in length. Oh. Now what is happening here is a visual reception and your brain is interpreting it in different ways. Sometimes your brain is more focused on the foreground than the background. Sometimes other lines come and confuse us and your brain is used to seeing things in three dimensions and incorporating perspective and depth into the vision. And so when we see a two-dimensional straight line, it's the, the brain is saying, no, but hold on, there's lines for perspective. Mm -hmm. You've had this situation, you've been sitting studying and you need it to be quiet. And the baby's crying and the dog's barking and your baby brother's making a noise and mommy's cooking in the kitchen. But all of that noise fades into the background. It's not that everyone's got quieter, it's that your brain has filtered out the unnecessary information. If I ask you to pick up a two kilogram packet of peas 
and uh, an eight kilogram packet of dog food, whew, you can tell the difference. But if I asked you to pick up 22 kilograms and 24 kilograms as big weights, you'd just say they're both very heavy. Mm -hmm. So your brain very often filters out unnecessary information or it allows you to make sense of your environment as your brain thinks you should be making sense <laughs> rather than precisely what you see. So that's really the difference between reception and perception. Your brain is, is helping you to make sense of things. <laughs>